In China, the government is omnipresent. It acts as decision maker, investor, franchisor, regulator, and supervisor all in one. But this is a model that is increasingly becoming the target of public complaints. Many say China needs a new direction. This week, the third plenary session of the 18th Communist Party of China Central Committee will meet to decide what that direction will be. Chu Fulin is head of the China Institute for Reform and Development, a think tank for China's leadership. He says China has reached a point at which it must decide to sink or swim. In the coming five to eight years, if the reform and transformation have made a breakthrough, China can enjoy sustainable development for at least ten to twenty years. But if they fail, the economic and social risks, in all likelihood, will jump. The top priority of the transformation is whether the government can limit its hand to the public services and set the market free. According to Chur, China's rapid growth has been partly government-driven. Promotions for local government officials are closely linked to GDP growth in their jurisdictions. This has led to authorities vying for resources to fuel local economic development. Why does an investor find government approval to be a heavy-going process? The government has a vested interest. The departmental interests, industry interests, regional interests, and officials' own interests have combined to make the approval difficult. And they caused systematic corruption as a result. The government should be a representative for public goods. A clue to China's new direction can be found in a document released by the Development and Research Center, the country's top think tank. In the document, which is believed to be a draft roadmap for the upcoming plenum, the center says that the government must properly cope with relations between itself and the market. We emphasize the limited market role under the government, rather than limited government role under the market. I visited South Africa and talked to its chief economic advisor and asked them to interpret how they see the China model. They responded by government intervention plus state-owned economy, but this is not a good model. The plan lists key areas earmarked for reform. Such reforms vary from streamlining the government and developing anti-monopoly policies to introducing land and financial reform. One major task for the new leadership will be to reduce government intervention in the marketplace. However, efforts have already been made to reduce government intervention. More than 200 administrative approval items are no longer being taken into consideration by the government. Authorities are still working to reduce the need for government approval in other areas. Approvals for foreigners who wish to drive their own vehicles in China, as well as approvals concerning imports of equipment and film for China foreign co-funded films, are under consideration for elimination. The government is also striving to reduce monopolies. The rail, fuel, power, and telecommunications sectors have been hamstrung by monopolies in recent years. Reforms are expected to break these monopolies and allow greater investment opportunities. Land reforms that will give greater land ownership rights to rural residents are also on the table for the meeting. Now, rural persons' land is not subject to the protection of property law, so they cannot put their land into market. By making rural persons owners of their land, we optimize the land use and increase rural persons' income. Such reforms will mean more investment opportunities for rural people who want to consolidate their assets. Foreign investors are holding out for news of financial reform in China. As China comes to loosen its control over the interest rates and exchange rates and ensure capital account convertibility, foreign banks could launch more financially innovative products. They excel at those innovations. Lian said interest rate reforms will come first. With exchange rate and capital account convertibility expected later, introducing market-oriented interest rates will mean banks can decide their own rates according to supply and demand. Currently, the central bank regulates the benchmark rate.
We cannot expect the free interest rates in the short term. First, we will have interbank loan rates and large domination corporate loan rates, which will both liberalize interest rates. The last step is to liberalize the interest rate on individual short-term savings account. That's the hardest one. Lian said the liberalization of interest rates is good news for both businesses and consumers. The plenum will be the government's third major meeting since coming into power last year. The first two plenary sessions of the Central Committee generally focus on selecting leaders for both the Communist Party of China and the state. The third session, which is held once the government has consolidated its power, typically focuses on the launch of political and economic changes. For example, the third plenum of the 11th Communist Party of China Central Committee, which was held in 1978, marked the introduction of China's reform and opening up policies.